This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. Now that we've got a handle on a nice little selection of box modeling commands, let's see if we can't build a telescope along with a pedestal mount that will be used to support it. Now, because we want our telescope to lay flat in our scene, let's create our object in the front view. We'll activate that view, then head to the right, clicking on Cylinder. Let's now draw our object at the crosshairs in our window. Once on the screen, let's scoot on back to the Modify column and we'll type in our values. For the radius, let's type in 9. We'll change the height to 35, the height segments to 1, and for the number of sides, we'll bump that up to 25. And once you've done that, go ahead and right-click to activate a viewport, then hit the Shift-Ctrl-Z shortcut for zoom extents. That'll make sure that our cylinder is centered in all four windows. So we can see our geometry as it's being added in, let's now turn on Edged Faces in our Shaded Perspective view. We'll do that with the F4 shortcut. To get to our modeling commands, we can now convert our cylinder down to an editable poly. We'll do that by simply right-clicking, dropping down to the bottom of the list, choosing Convert To, then Convert to Editable Poly. Now our telescope is going to consist of four primary sections each being cylindrically shaped and each being just a little smaller in diameter than the one directly in front of it. What we have on the screen right now is going to serve as the front largest section of our telescope, the area where the front lens sits. Why don't we add a little extra detail around the very front lip of that section? Now to be able to build that out, we're going to need a little more geometry. That'll come by way of an additional line of edges that we'll create using the Slice Plane command. In the stack, open up the Editable Poly entry. Now, activate the Element way of selecting and click on the cylinder. Our Slice command will be found in the right-hand column a little farther down. When you find that button, go ahead and click. Looking in the top view, you'll see the Slice plane is originally positioned in the center of our selection. We're going to want to move that closer down to the bottom end in our top view. We'll activate the top view, grab the green stick on the gizmo, and move the Slice plane down so it's maybe an eighth to a quarter inch from the end of our cylinder. Once you have that in place, we'll now make the slice. Go back to the right-hand side and directly below Slice Plane, click on the Slice button. It's the slice that does the actual cut. Once we've done that, we can turn off the Slice Plane button and deselect our polys. With our new edges created, let's take our perspective view full screen. We'll do that using the Alt-W shortcut. What we want to do now is select that small little row of polygons. To do that, let's first orbit to the side so we get a good side lateral view. Once we've done that, we'll change our selection over to Poly, and up on the left-hand side of the toolbar, we'll verify that our window selection has been set to Crossing. If in the right mode, the icon will have the white box on the edge of the perforated square behind it. OK, now we can carefully make our selection. Starting above and to the right-hand side of our cylinder, we'll window down, falling just short of that slice plane line. Now once you've made your selection, orbit around to make sure that you have indeed selected the proper polys. Now in addition to the row of polys that we wanted, we also got the capped poly on the end. This one we don't want, so simply hold down the Alt key and click on that circle. To build up this area, which is going to represent the front part of our telescope, we'll now use the Extrusion options. Over on the right, find the Extrude command. Now to access the options, we won't be clicking directly on Extrude, instead clicking on the button directly to its right. This brings up a caddy. We can move the caddy to the side by simply grabbing it up where it says Extrude Polys, holding down the left mouse button and moving our mouse. You'll notice that when we orbit the view, the caddy stays perpendicular or flat with our window. What looks like a mess right this moment can easily be changed by going to the second row and changing to Local Normal. That will serve to push all the polygons out in a straight direction. Using the third level, the extrusion amount, we can now take that down. Why don't we settle in by typing in a value of 0.5. You can double click on the value, type in your number, then press Enter to lock it in. Let's accept by clicking on the green check mark. We'll stay in polygon selection mode and simply click on that large circular poly. Orbit around to get yourself in position, zooming in if you like, then, using the right mouse click, down in the lower left square, choose Extrude. To form the lens for our telescope, we'll simply push this in a tad. Very good. Once done, we'll click away, and we can start building up the other end of the first section of our telescope. Let's roll our wheel back, 
orbit around, and select that polygon. This polygon will represent the first break in our four-piece telescope. To drop down to the next section or level, we'll use the inset command. Over in the right-hand column, one level below extrude and to its right, go ahead and click on the option box for inset. This actually looks pretty good with the way things are, so we'll leave the setting at 1 and we'll simply accept the results. Now we're going to want to extrude out the next section of our telescope. For that, we'll again use the option box for the extrude, but this time around we'll simply right-click on our screen. In the lower left-hand square, find the extrude command, then click on the option box to its left. We can then drop down to the third row to make our adjustment. Now you might remember that the height on our original cylinder was 35. With this section designed to be just the same length or height as our front section, let's change our extrude amount to 35. Again, we'll double click on the value, type in 35, then press Enter. Once we've done that, we'll accept the changes made. Let's now hit Z so we can center the polygon on the screen. At this point, we simply repeat the process again. Now this time when we inset, we're going to go a little bit deeper than the last. Right click on the screen, choose the option box for inset. The third level where it reads 1, let's change that instead to 1.5. We'll lock the number down and I'll accept the changes. Roll your mouse back to give yourself a little bit more room positioning yourself for the upcoming extrude. When in place, right click again on the screen, head down to the lower left hand square opening up the extrude option box. Now you can see that Max has remembered the last amount that we've used with the extrude. Leaving it at 35, go ahead and accept the extrusion. To begin our fourth section, we'll do another inset. This time, when the option opens, we'll change the amount from 1.5 up to 2. Lock in your results, accept the changes made. Now for the fourth and final section, we'll extrude again. Choosing the option box each time locks us down with the same extrude value as the time before. We'll accept the 35 value by clicking the green check mark. Go ahead and hit Z again. For the telescope's eyepiece, we're going to add a little extra geometry onto the end. That's going to be just another extrusion. This time, though, we'll simply use the mouse. We'll get ourselves in position. We'll right click. We'll opt away from the option box this time, simply clicking on the extrude name. Now, extrude the polygon out, maybe a good three quarters to an inch. Like we did with the front part of the telescope, we'll build this area up also. Orbit to the side for a better view. Continuing with both the poly selection and the crossing command, go ahead and window that entire last section. Orbit around to verify the polygons that you've selected. Now, just like we did on the front, we want the row of polys, but not the circular poly on the end. To deselect that, hold the Alt key down and click on the circle. Let's now fancy this up a little bit by using the bevel options. Again, we can access those using the right mouse click. In the caddy on the second level, change by local normal. The third level will take down quite a ways. Then, why don't we force in the value by double clicking and typing 0.3. For the outline, let's take that to negative 0.5. OK, we're going to want to agree to what we've done, but we want to continue to add another bevel. This time around, on the bottom row, instead of clicking on the green check mark, we'll go to the middle clicking on the green plus sign. This will bake in our previous bevel, yet still give us the options to continue on. This time around, our second bevel will change from normal to bipoly. We can then accept the two values below just as they are, 0.3 and negative 0.5. Go ahead now and accept the bevels by clicking on the check mark. Now to finish off this end, we'll add our eye lens. Select the bottom circular poly and we'll perform another inset, this time though simply using the mouse. Right click on the poly, from the list choose the inset command. Put your mouse on top of the selected poly and simply pull back. Once you like the distance that you've gone, right click changing over to the extrude command. Now for the lens itself, we can simply bevel this in. Go ahead and click away, then we'll roll back and recenter our completed telescope. So that's it for the telescope body. Next, we'll see if we can't build a stand or pedestal for it to be mounted to. We'll do that in our next video. Why don't we go ahead and save this up as telescope so we can take it with us.